that's one and we on amen and amen <laughs> all right i'm gonna welcome everyone here we've already started with prayer uh I'm trying to save some of the time that we have for the things that we're learning but welcome 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 all in, in uh welcome here today and um, we're all participating. Those who are on the Zoom would be using the chat. Those who are on Facebook be using the text. And uh, and uh, we just thank you all for being here. Don't forget to share and invite others. Amen. Uh, spread the word. It's a good word. Amen. The word of the Lord. All right. This is the Royal Rulers and Trainer online classes. It's Kingdom Culture, Wednesday and Thursday, 7 to 7 30. And the Zoom number is 634 061 Amen. Glad you're all here. Let's get started. I just want to get this out the way <laughs> and share that the, the, the book that the Lord has given me, it's out now. It's uh, Yesterday was his first day out as the Kindle. And today, uh, the the book, uh, the paperback is out today, and you can go on Kindle or Amazon.com and use my name, Odelia Jackson, and usually all the books come up. Uh, what you want to, uh, which you, which one you're interested in? Just want to say something about this Kingdom Training Manual. Is it goes with the other, the first two. The first two manuals are what we're being taught, our true identity, purpose, and learning the uh, the act of royal rule and reign of God in each of us. So therefore, this book here is, this book, it's about activating everything that you have already learned. And so those who are, this is for all of God's children, okay? Everybody keep asking me for age, it's all of God's children. And as we continue to plant seeds, even in the little ones who don't know yet, we'll soon know if we keep planting. Okay? <laughs> Amen. So I just want to share a little bit about that. I'm so excited about that, what God is going to do and how he's going to use this manual to train up his royal rulers. Amen? That we will be do exploits. Amen? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go. In him we live and move and have our being, Acts 17, 28. We always need to keep that before us to remember that it's because of him that we live and move and have our being. And, um, and, and, and I asked the question, how do we know that? And, 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 uh, and why? It's because of Genesis 1, 26. That... Uh, when he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And so we're made in his image and after his likeness. And so God is spirit and we are spirit, his offsprings. We are the offsprings of God, his spirit beings. All right. And so in him, we live and move and have our being. And so as soon as we get that a paradigm shift in our mind, our, our thought life, that this is why we, we, we live and we move and have our being. It's in him, the one who created us, God, the Father. Amen? And so we talked about training up a child. I'm going to go where we, was yet, uh, where we stopped at yesterday. And we've been talking about spending time with God. You got to spend time with God in order for it to understand of uh, the seen and unseen world um, and, and and be able to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So you got to make sure which spirit you're prompting to. Okay, so it's important. So spending that time with God, you got to keep that. That needs to be a part of your lifestyle. So that's where you get your, your, our orders from um, the chief, the headquarters. <laughs> God, God is spirit. I right? think we did that yesterday. Uh, and so let me see. We we stop right here. Uh, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Now we learned a couple of things yesterday about the spirit bearing witness with our spirit. Um, yesterday, and as we learn, we're gonna learn a couple of more tonight. So uh, get ready. Um, and the other side says, "I am his child, 
for a claim of spiritual fraternity to be valid, we have to think as he does. That's in Acts 17, 29. And we have to feel as he does, 1 John 3, 11 to 20. And we have to act as he does, 1 John 3, 10, 21 to 24. But that's not all there is to it. Okay, it's more. It's always more. You know, we can't exhaust God. You know, none of his word, none of his, none of, nothing that has to do with him, you can't exhaust him. So as you continue to seek, he keeps unfolding. Amen? So we've been talking about um, how does the spirit bears witness with our spirit. We learned a couple things yesterday. Anybody remember uh, those things that we learned yesterday? Don't anybody shout at the same time. <laughs> okay. um, wait a minute. How does spirit be, be bearing witness with our spirit? Um, of God. Come on. We went over like that we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes, yeah. But how does the spirit bear witness with our spirit? Oh, it, it, it speaks to us. He speaks to us, yeah. Um he bears witness. Yes, we wanna know how. He, he, it teaches and reminds us. He he what and reminds? Teaches. He teaches us and reminds us the spirit teaches us and reminds us. now if you have a teachable spirit like a childlike faith that means that you would submit your your your, your uh, to the leading of the holy spirit that's why the kingdom is um the scripture in matthew 18 3 it says you cannot enter the kingdom unless you have the childlike faith i'm paraphrasing it and so it's not saying that you're not born again. It's just saying you will not experience the spiritual, the supernatural as a, a son of God like you're supposed to if you don't submit to the king, um, to the uh, spirit. All right? Is that clear? Yeah. Anything that's not clear, you need to make sure you understand because understanding is very vital to what you're learning. Okay, you can say yeah, you can say yeah, 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 but don't understand nothing. Okay, <laughs> so make sure you understand how does the spirit bear witness, right? We did this yesterday, and it said it has five personal pictures of the Holy Spirit, and uh, we're gonna go into some more. We did that yesterday. You have to look get uh, on the recording on that, and we did the inner one was inner witnesses, the inner knowing about the spirit of God being inside of us. And um, we gave demonstrations about that yesterday of when the spirit is warning us to, we could go somewhere or it's in agreement or not, okay? Or uh, the uh, second one was the inner witness of the Holy Spirit being witness in agreement with your spirit through the inner witness. So we gave demonstrations about that yesterday. So we're gonna keep moving. I have to go back to the uh, recording for that. I'm trying to get to where we stopped. We stopped right here yesterday. The unseen realm and what evidence is there of a spiritual realm? And so let's go on. First of all, in order for you to see this, uh, un, uh, to get a glimpse of this unseen realm, first thing you have to do is what's this first side say over here? Trust in God's plan. Trust in God's plan. Okay? You have to trust in God's plan just like you sat down in that chair without checking that chair to make sure that chair holds you up. Did you grasp what I said? Uh, no. Can you say that again? I know. You got, who got something on in the background? Oh, yeah, I forgot my bed. I fall down my PS4. I'm tired off. All right. Okay. Somebody answer that? I got to say it again, right? Yes, please. You got to trust in God's plan just like you sat down in that chair without checking to make sure that chair uh, will hold you up. Oh, so, like, we got to 
trusting God that he's going to do things for us. Yeah, he's going to do what his words say. Okay, got that? That's good, Lele. So what do the other side say over there? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Knowledge and knowledge. Acknowledge. Acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Yes. Like so when you're spending time with God, you know, we talked about knowing God is knowing yourself. So when you spend time with God and, and you trust God's plan for your life, even though he says in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he says, the thoughts that I have towards you, they're of good and not of evil, that you will uh, uh, have expected in. God has a plan. His thoughts towards you are of good. You need to trust him like you sat on that chair without checking to see if it holds you. And he says, when you spend time with him and you trust in him with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, he will, and you acknowledge him when you spend that time with him, when you respond with prayer, when we say we're going to read, write down our thoughts and respond in prayer. This is a prayer right here, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. That when you trust in God, you say, Lord, I'm acknowledging you in all my ways. And your word says that you would you would direct my path. You would make my path straight. And so when you when you come to God with his word, he's going to have to answer his own word. God will not violate his own word, okay? He will perform that word. So that was one of the things. This is something that you can write down as part of your prayer and personal time with God when y'all spend time together. You know, bring to him everything uh, all your ways. He said, Lord, I'm, this is what I was planning on doing. This is what da 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 da. <laughs> okay? And then God will start leading you in the right path as you submit to his will and his way. Now, I don't know if y'all y'all said earlier that I had the book up there. That book is part of me uh, acknowledging God in all my ways so that he would direct my path. So he's the one that is designing all of these books. He's giving me download. Remember I said visions and dreams. We need to write that stuff down. And then as you write them down, you plan how this is going to come. You need to spend time with God, how they're going to come to fruition, how it's going to manifest this thing. And so all of it has a process in between that nobody sees. All they see is the finished product. Okay. So you got to write stuff down, make a plan how you're going to manifest this, and you discuss this with the king. Instead of he will, and you, as you acknowledge him, that he will direct your, your, your path. And everything, decisions you're going to have to make, you know, things that you don't, you know, you don't like, or, or you know, just things that's going on in your life. Talk to God about it. Don't lean to your own understanding. That's a disaster. All right? You can try it if you want, but uh, God will not force you to do his way, his way. All right, so John 14, 15, 21, if you love me, what he say? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. So whoever has my commandment and keeps them, he is who loves me. So God knows you love him. How do God know you love him? When you keep his commandments. Come on, girl. All right. That's right. That's how he knows. You can say it all you want, you know, want, 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 okay? <laughs> but until you keep the commandment, that's how he knows, all right? So, so he said, when you do that, he says, he know that you love him, and he, he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So God, when you obey and God's obedient, you keep his commandment, he will manifest himself. So you got to trust God. Yeah. He has a plan. You got to trust him. And if, if you look over here where it uh, has the, the word trust that and it has the little uh, trucks that look like they building something. Y'all see that over there on the other side? Oh, yeah. See that, Lonnie? Lionel. <laughs> Yeah, not now. Okay, I'm gonna get with him in a minute. 
So trusting in God is like you building something. You're building. You're building a relationship, right? Yeah. And building intimacy and, and, a, and a relationship with God. And so you, you start trusting him. So look, look down here where it says, where is it in the blue? What do that say? It says, trust unlock door of supernatural. Right. So we're talking about understanding the seen and unseen. When you trust in God and you go and you lean out to your own understanding, trusting in him unlocks the door of supernatural. You can't go by what you see with the natural eye. That, that eye, you know, is not seen properly in the spirit realm. You need to see in the spirit. Okay? What the second one says, Lionel? What the second one say in the blue? The second one. Unlock, unmute. Unmute. Cross unlock door. Second one. Instead of us, we'll teach you more about God than and my time of Bible history. Okay, you re I, I said this. You got to pay attention, babe. I said it in blue. Read the second one the, in the blue writing. That's what I read, and you said no. You, start, you read the first one. I said the second one. Yeah, I was reading the one that said, oh, object, unlock your understanding. Nah. You didn't say the first word. What was the first word? My now, what are you doing? My now. Yeah. Give me the phone. Someone read the second one. Read someone read the second one. I did. What's the first letter? What's the first word up there? O or W. Which one? The second one. You didn't read the first word. You oh. Oh what? Obedience unlocks your understanding. Oh, uh, well, you didn't say that. Yes, I did. Did it, y'all? <laughs> yeah, he said, yeah, he said unlock. Okay, let's go to the next one. It's wasting time. Come on. Somebody read the next one. A wind unlocks the promise of God. Yes. So your trust unlocks the doors of supernatural. Obedience unlocks your understanding. And obedience unlocks the promises of God. Amen. And then the last one over there that Lionel read, it's dead, it's instant obedience, instant obedience. That means as soon as you say, we'll teach you more about God in a lifetime Bible discussion. Now, chew on that one. You need to chew on that one. Bless you. Uh, we're trying to get you so you can understand about in the spirit realms, the unseen and unseen. I mean, the seen and unseen. So seeing in the spirit room is what we're talking about tonight. Beware of the thoughts and imagination that you receive to your prayers. Here's a scripture, Hebrews 11, 1 and 4. Uh, uh, someone read that. I mean, 11, 1. Oh, um, uh, um, the, the purple one? Yes. According to Hebrews 11, um, verse 1, faith equals is insurance of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction, mm -hmm. conviction. of their reality. Then we can safely conclude that faith is not something that we physic can physically see with our five senses. What? What is faith not? Uh, faith is not something we can physically see with our five senses. Right. What is your five senses? Um, feeling, touching, I mean, that's the same thing. Feeling, smelling, tasting, touching. hearing, 
hearing, yes. The five senses. So faith, when we talk about faith, it's not talking about those things. So faith is not something that you can physically see with your eyes and your five senses. Now, now, turn around. You're on national TV. Everybody looking at you. Now, this is what faith is, the assurance of things we hope for, being the proof of things what? We do not see. So we're talking about the seen and the unseen. The seen and unseen. So faith is something that you can't see with the physical or, or the five senses. And faith is proof of things we do not see. It's like you took faith for you to sit down in that chair without looking and, you know, wait a minute, I don't know if this chair going to hold me or not. But you sat down, right? Yeah. Without even thinking about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's a part of faith of, that you knew in your, in your knower that that chair going to hold me up. That's how we're supposed to be about God's word and what God will call us to do. God call it don't make sense with the natural eye and the five senses because we're not operating like that. We're operating in the spiritual realm. Okay, we just we just saw here the scripture in Hebrews eleven one, faith is the assurance of things we hope for. If you see it, why would you hope for it, right? Uh. So it's the proof of things we do not see. All right, so the Greek word for faith is pistis, which is credence. I'm only going to do that one. Credence, by definition, is mental acceptance as true and real. So by faith, even though you can't see it, in your mind, you see it, what God's word is saying to you and the instructions he gave you as true and what? Real. Real. And real, even though you cannot see it right now. You can see it in the spirit room because God said it. That's what it means, seen and unseen in the spirit room. God said it, okay? And so it's real, all right? That's why you need to know the word. It's not, it is not through some super spiritual act that men like Moses did, but simply by accepting as truth. God's word, when you accept God's word as truth, in, in your imaginations, as truth, that God's giving you a download, a vision, and dreams, that's why you need to know the word. You need to know God. You need to know his spirit. You need to know his voice so you know it's from him. As 1 Corinthians 2, 16 says, it confirms that we share the thoughts of Christ. So that's why you need to you, you have an intimate relationship with it so you know that you sh you're sharing those thoughts with Christ that they are uh, of him okay yeah. all right so to today I encourage you every last one everybody that's listening including myself <laughs> oh boy what I'm touch <laughs> including myself I encourage you to acknowledge your unity with, fa with Father, with the Father. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge, the word is, the key is acknowledge that you are one with the Father. Beware of the thoughts and the imaginations that you have in your, in your, in your, in your dreams, in your prayer time. So God, God gives me visions throughout the day sometimes too. Sometimes I have to go write them down. It's when he, when he, when he gives them to you because I'll forget. That's why you're supposed to write down your visions and your dreams because it's coming from him. You're not going to remember. So beware of the thoughts and the imaginations that you receive in response to your prayers. Got it? Yes, sir. All right. understand that. So understanding the seen and the unseen. Let's look at these uh, definitions real quick. This is going to kind of help you out. Um, manifest, when we say manifest, we're supposed to manifest on earth what is in, uh, in uh, on heaven. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're supposed to manifest on earth what's in heaven. 
So manifest, this is what it means. I'm going to ask y'all a question in a little bit. Manifest, so take some notes. Manifest means clear, obvious to the, the eye or your mind. That means uh, manifest simply, to break, break it down simply, it means to show that you can see it. You can see this thing. It displays or shows. It's a quality of feeling by one act or appearance and demonstrate. The other word over here is compound. And I'm going to share a little bit about what we're talking about, compound. Um, if y'all stick with me because I only got 30 minutes. But uh, come back tomorrow. A thing that is composed of two or more separate elements, a mixture made up or consistent of two or more existing parts or elements. How come I don't see you, Lon? Gospel. Here, here's a part of two things that's being mixed and compound here. Now, this is where I'm, after this, I'm going to ask you some questions. I hope y'all are taking notes. The gospel heard without faith is of no value to anybody. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left, left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So in other words, people can hear the gospel being preached to them. If they didn't mix it with faith, it is of no value to them. So we talked about uh, mixing two elements and compounding. Profiting in, in Hebrews 4, 2. Someone read that. Uh, is that the volume right there? Yeah. Uh, the word? Oh, the word of God must be mixed with faith in order for God to work with sin. Huh? What? Come on. And 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 this includes the, us, the unseen. If God is giving you something that doesn't make no sense, but the word of God is telling you what to do, you can't see it, okay, with your, your natural eye. But the what you just read, Anaya, Hebrews 4, 2, the word of God must be mixed with what? With faith. Right. In order for what? God to work within me. For God to work within me. Line now, get your brother. So the 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 word of God, that's one element, must be mixed with faith. That's two. In order for God to work with me. It says work with me. Okay? So when I confess the word of God about my situation, the word of God transformed my situation. But how did that happen? The scripture just told y'all. Somebody tell me how it happened. Uh, we mixed with faith? Yes, the word of God was mixed with faith. The person as they was confessing the word of God about their situation in order for God to work with them. If they have to, James said it this way, show me your, he said, show me your work without faith, faith without work, something like that. So they got to go together. Y'all understand? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So those, that's the elements of when I was just showing you about the compound. Oh, go back, thing. I need you to move. <laughs> go back, go back. Okay. Okay. Going forward, I want you to go back. There you go. The understanding the seen and the unseen. The seen is what you manifest that was invisible. It what what is it manifested now was invisible. So the person's situation was uh, what they needed was manifested because they mixed it with faith, right? They mixed the word of God with faith for God to work with them, right? Yes. And then when we talked about compound, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, uh, about mixing the elements that made up a, or consistent of two or more existing parts of the elements. 
So we'll, we'll share a little bit more on that later. So what do James 1, 2 say? 22 say? Uh, do not merely listen to the words and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Okay, there's two things you got to do. You can listen to the word and you got to, then what's the other one you got to do? So you yeah. don't, go ahead. Deceive yourself. So you don't deceive yourself. You um, listen to the word and you got to do what it says. Y'all got that? Yes. So we can't just be doers, I mean, uh, hearers of the word. You must be what? You do the word. Right. And the only way you do the word is you got to hear the words so you can do the work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds funny. Anyway, these scriptures right here tells us this is what we ought to do, not to let the book of law depart from your mouth, but meditate on the day and night, that you be careful to do according to all that is written in it. And then Joshua 1.8, oh, that's the same thing, it said, but it says it in a different way. Fighting and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with, oh, that's 8 and 9. So the main part we're talking about is not letting the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Do so that you can't be careful to do according to all that is written. As you just saw the scriptures back here, it says, if you just hear the word and don't do it, you will be deceiving yourself. So you got to meditate on don't let it depart, and do, be careful to do all that is written. And then the rest of that, and then you will have good success. They don't have all of that up there. Then you will have good success. Amen, amen. And so somebody tell me so far, what do you got? Excuse me? What do you have? Oh. So far, yeah. Um, the gospel of Christ is not. It's not. The gospel of Christ is not possible without. Faith. It's not possible without faith, right? Is it possible to please God? Yes. All right. Next person. Faith is mental acceptance as real and truth in our lives. Come on, boy. That's a good one right there. That's a note to the note, note, note. Okay? <laughs> faith is, 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 is real and true. Say that again, Isaiah. Uh, faith is mental acceptance as real and true in our lives. Right. Mental acceptance. You don't see it, but in your mind, you accept it. That it's real and it's true. What, what God says, what God is directing you to. All right, Alea. All right, so I have two things. Okay. My first thing is faith is proof of things we can't see, um, and faith is not something you can uh, see with your five senses. And manifest is uh, clear or obvious to the eye or mind. Is what to the eye of mine? Obvious or clear. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. That's good. Definition, definitely that's good. Help us to understand. Yes. Thank you, Leah. Lon, now, did you get anything tonight? All I know is Romans 8, 4. What God, is, what God has been saying to me as I've been asking him, what did you want them to uh, learn this year or this season? And he says he wants them to. He wants y'all to know him. He wants to spend time with you, and he wants you to know him. And so he wants when you get to know him, he wants this to be real in your life, not just abstract. He wants it to be concrete that you and God intimate relationship. So how are, you know so that this next generation will be able to do carry out what God wants you to do, and so. He wants you to do what the sons of God do, okay? But you have to learn some things first before you actually um, uh, 
put it into action. Okay. And and what do Romans eight fourteen say? As many as are led by the Spirit, these are sons of God. By the Spirit of God. Many are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. So being led by the Spirit, is the Spirit visible? Uh, no. Sometimes. No, the Spirit is invisible. And so the Spirit only speaks what God speaks. The Spirit only speaks what the Word of God speaks. So that's why it says the Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. That's why you need to know what the Word says. Okay, you need to understand it and know what it says. So the Spirit will lead you. The Spirit might tell you some stuff that's not in the Bible, but it's, it's, it's what God will have you to do at a certain time. And, and so you got to be uh, alert to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You got to spend time with God so you know that is the Spirit of God. All right? So as many as are led, you have to be led by the Spirit. To be, uh, and it says not to be, but as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So the Spirit can speak to you. The Spirit can say, "Don't do that." The Spirit can say, "Go do that." The Spirit can say, "Don't do that." Okay. The Spirit can say, um, uh, "The Spirit can say you like if you study to give a, a lesson or something, the Spirit will lead you into something else." So you follow the Spirit. You follow what the Spirit, even though you had stayed up all night studying, okay? <laughs> the Spirit is is the one that leads and guides us into all truth because the Spirit knows what, what people need that is out there that we will be ministering to, all right? Y'all understand that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so when we're talking about uh, the mixture of the elements, you need to know God's word and you need to and and you need to mix it with faith for God to work with you. Got it? Yes, man. That's a good point, baby. And then what Isaiah said, what you say, Isaiah, about the uh faith is mental acceptance of what's true and real. Did I say it right? Uh, yes. Yes. So you want to know what faith is? Isaiah just gave us the ad, I mean the address. The uh, definition back to us is of mental acceptance of true and real. And, and mental acceptance is you can't see in your mental, okay? But you know what God's word says. I used to ask the question, what is faith? And if you can't see it, okay? And so if you can't see faith, then what is faith? Faith is trusting God's word. The word of God. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So there you go. Our minutes is up there, sis. That our minutes is, we got 10 minutes. Anybody have any, any words? Anybody have any um, feedback? Uh, so far, how would you apply this in your life? Hello. Okay. I heard that. What? Say that again. Apply faith. <laughs> Apply faith. And how would you do that? By spending time on God. By what? Don't be afraid. Say knowing, knowing God's will. Yeah, when well, knowing God's will, you just say that because I put that up there. What else you say before that? I said, um, uh, spending time with God. Spending time with God. When you spend time with God, that's how you get to know what his will is for your life. That's right. You're right. All that's right. Okay? And so, when the Spirit gives you something, just to make sure, I'm going to stop right there, just to make sure that you know it's from God, you ask, you, I ask you to always look to Scripture. Prove everything by Scripture. Y'all got it? Right, dividing the word of truth, not by what someone says, and not traditions, okay? Yeah. Don't believe everything you hear and everything you say. You make sure it comes from the word. That's why you need to know the word. But 
It's not tradition, but by the word of God. Knowing God's will, how to determine God's will, 2 Timothy 2.15. Let's read that together. Be, be diligent. Uh, oh, together? Yeah, one, two, three. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed okay. of dividing the word of truth. So, but in order to determine God's will, you got to be diligent to present yourself approved to God. That means you got to be studying God's word. You got to seek God's face. You got to acknowledge him in all your ways that he will direct your path. Got it? All this stuff we heard tonight, it all came together. And you don't trust everything somebody says. You be, if they say something to you and they say, yeah, this is what God says. They say, well, show me that in the word. Okay? Y'all hear me? Yeah. All right. If they can't show you in the word, then you know. You know, put you know, nix that. Okay? <laughs> nix that. All right, what time is it? I, I know I'm losing time here. I see some people and say, hey, Ava, uh, Alba, thank you for being here. Ben, Alan, thank you for being here. Hey, Sherry Landers, yes. I seen Anthony earlier today. Pastor Anthony, Amos Young, Laura. Oh, God bless all of y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you for your support. Prayer, 745. Okay, you're getting off, y'all. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you, Amen, Sherry. Yes. It, it is a pleasure for pleasure to be here. Thank you, Vince. All right, y'all. We're gonna say good night tomorrow night, same time. God bless you. We'll finish this up tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. What's the, what's the night? Thursday? Yes. Oh, I'm ready to keep going. Next week, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next week. Okay. God bless you. Every Wednesday and Thursday, seven to seven thirty. All right. God bless y'all. Tomorrow. I'm just saying. Love, love y'all. Good night. <laughs> Bye. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Look at him. I don't even have to turn this off. <laughs> oh, I got to go keep it. Uh -oh. I know. Stop that noise, please.